Check this out. Did you know that selfies make you look uglier than you really are? Be honest, which one of us would you rather date? The guy over there with the wide googly eyes and enormous nose? Or me, the handsome guy with a flattering proportioned face, seducing you right now? Hi, I'm John Bear. so happy to see your beautiful face and today I'm gonna talk about why professional photographers are likely taking better photos than you do with your phone. Let's go. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm John Bear, and I make videos about how to do awesome videos. So if that's something you're into, then uh, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so why do selfies make you look more ugly? It all has to do with focal lengths. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You go into the bathroom, you look in the mirror, and you're like, ooh, that's a beautiful person in the mirror right there. And you decide to take out your phone and capture the moment, capture the beauty that you're witnessing with your own human eyes on your phone, just to find out that the photo just doesn't look the way that you do in the mirror. And now you're depressed. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So why is this? Well, let's look at the example from the beginning again. The main difference is that one of them is using a wide lens, and I'm standing very close to the camera. This is like a selfie. This is the version of me that nobody would want to date. The other one is using a tight lens, and I'm standing really far from the camera. My features are more flattering, and all of a sudden I'm flooded with DMs from hot babes. So what's going on? Well, when you hold a camera close to your face with a wide lens, it distorts all your features. Your nose becomes bigger, and your face becomes thinner, and your eyes become like googly eyes. This is not an accurate representation of what you look like. So if you take a selfie and then you feel depressed, well, don't be, because people don't see you that way. Come on, you're beautiful, don't be camera shy. Wide focal lengths will stretch everything, not just your face, but also like the environment. Look again and notice the difference in the background. On the wide lens, you can see the environment around me and the background looks really friggin' far away. On the tight lens, it looks like I'm standing up against the background. So if wide lenses stretch everything out and makes things look further away, then tight lenses actually compresses everything and makes everything look less 3D. It's like everything's closer together somehow. And of course, in order to get the same framing on a tight lens, you have to put the camera way back. So actually right now when I'm filming, uh, I'm filming on a 50 millimeter lens right now, and the camera is on the opposite end of the room, pretty far away. And 50 millimeters is generally the focal range that professional portrait photographers tend to prefer. And that's not a coincidence. Why? Because it's estimated that the human eye sees about 50 millimeter focal range. So it's the closest to what the human eye sees. Technically, your human eye sees at about like 22 millimeter focal range. But when I'm waving my arm here, this is like my peripheral vision, right? I'm not actually seeing my arm. I'm, I'm sensing it, but I'm not focused on it. So when you're comparing the human eye, it's, it gets a little complicated because your brain does a lot of the heavy lifting. So when you focus on something, your brain is actually reconstructing that image based on the information that your eye is getting. So even though you technically have 22 millimeter wide view with your eyes, the way you perceive the world is closer to 50 millimeter because your brain sort of zooms in on what you're looking at. One of my patrons, uh, Fernando, he asked me, like, why does the moon look big when you see it in person, but then you pull out your phone and plan to take a photo of the moon all of a sudden the moon looks like a little dimple. Well, this is exactly the reason, because phones have a very wide focal range, whereas your eyes are closer to 50 millimeters. All right, cool. So 50 millimeter is like the sweet spot for the most flattering human faces. Cool, good to know, right? Here's a crazy consideration. So if the distortions have to do with the distance and the focal range of your eyes, why then, when you move close to someone, does their features not distort? Remember how I said that the brain does a lot of heavy lifting? Experts believe that when you move closer to someone's face, your brain is making up for the distortions by recreating the image that you're seeing. It's really quite wild. It makes you realize that when you're actually seeing the world, 
you're only seeing the interpretation that your brain is creating for you. You're basically living in the matrix right now and the brain is your interface. This is why I love cameras and that I love using different lenses because they let you see the world in a very different way, in an unbiased way. While your brain is busy interpreting the signals coming in, the camera just gives you the image like it is. And you really get a different sense of what the world looks like. So I hope after seeing this video, uh, it has inspired you to pick up a camera and go out and uh, try to take some good photos. That's it for this video. If you're into camera stuff and uh, how to make better video, that's what this channel is all about. So uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.